Hello, and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 23rd, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter5. And as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hello. And our guest today is D. John Richards, all the way from across the pond in England. Welcome. How the devil are you? Hmm. Doing well. Thank you. <laughs> Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And today, scientism. <laughs> and if you think you're the only non-believer in your town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. The Atheist Society of Knoxville, or ASK, and we'll tell you more about them after the mid-show break. Well, Matt, you want to get into our topic for today? I do, but I did want to touch on something that happened to me last night. I was watching a, a fighting event, UFC 280. And I'm no, and it took place in Abu Dhabi, and they have a lot of different fighters from all around the world fight in a, a cage, and, and they and they and they go through combat, and when they're done, they do an interview with the person, and it turned out this is strange enough, but every single winner wanted to thank God for their performance, uh -huh. and I was just like, what a bizarre thing that we don't allow fighters to take like uh, uh, certain supplementals or like testosterone, but we allow them to use God as a way to enhance their performance. Can we please ban God as a performance enhancing drug? Cause <laughs> that's really unfortunate. And if anything, God should just let us know which one he picked ahead of time. So that way the other person doesn't have to get beaten up because it yeah, seems yeah. to be a hundred percent of the time. That is so cool. Well, the, the other thing, the other aspect of this is that hmm. presumably the losers also invoked the assistance of god so he's obviously only successful 50 percent of the time now here's my thing i thought about that i thought about that long and hard and i was thinking to myself maybe god just didn't like that person was lying and if god was just more straight up about with who his favorites were that would help the betting lines it would help <laughs> people not have to go through needless harm of getting beaten up just be like yes. oh god chose this person not you fantastic we already know who's yeah. gonna win you're done you're done yeah, yeah. Well, 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 yeah, but why don't the losers blame God for not winning? <laughs> yes. I mean, if he if he gets credit, he should also get the blame. And there's another can of worms as well, because if God has favorites, yes, we what's know his God criteria. Does, is he a racist? Is he homophobic? <laughs> How's he picking these people? If there's one thing we know about God, is he loves to pick and choose. God's love to pick and choose. I'm just saying, just make that public. That way, someone doesn't have to get beaten up because. I can't beat a person if someone's using God and I only have push-ups and yeah. fish fillets, you know? Like, yeah. I need more stuff on my side. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, true. And it's I saw a meme the other day. It was kind of funny. It says it showed uh, some Hasidic Jews uh, yeah. in their traditional dress. And yeah. it says, these are God's favorite people, according to the book they wrote. <laughs> right, 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 right. Good one, good of course, one. Yeah. According to the book the Mormons wrote. <laughs> right. Yeah. God's uh, favorite people. Yeah. Or uh, the Hindus or whatever. Yes. It, it was a weird thing because there were both Christians and Muslims at this event in Dubai, right? And yeah. it was weird when the, the uh, Islamic winners were like, ah, uh, like, they were saying uh, in their language, I love God, God's good, great, and everyone's cheering. And then when a Christian wins, and I did this through the blood of Jesus Christ, and everyone's <laughs> booing. And I'm like, what in the world's <laughs> going on? Just like at least consistently pick the God that's in the area. At least that way everyone can have a good time. That's all I was mm -hmm. saying. Got to yeah. work on the favoritism a little bit. Just make it more clear. Yeah, John, God is so generic. <laughs> the word God. I mean, everybody claims it. And that's yeah, why yeah. it's on our money, I'm sure. It's a job description, not a identity. We have mm -hmm. to remember that. All right. John Richards, just like to check in with you before we dive into it. How you been? Yeah, I've been fine. Thank you very much. I've been doing my usual nefarious deeds. Oh, we, okay. we had a, an interesting, it was just Tercier and I again, because our, our guest didn't turn up for Free Thought Hour. We don't know why. So we're hoping that he's not fallen a victim of some nasty incident but anyway if you need a new guest let me know i'd be happy to tap in or if you need someone to yeah. just if the Great. hours work out right just let me know 
yeah, yeah, yeah excellent. Yeah. Well, very kind. We shall definitely do that. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, shoot me a, a reminder too. I should be able to drop in depending on the great. time, of course. Great, excellent. Yeah. The problem well, with we... having a cat is you just wake up with a bed full of cat toys. <laughs> we try to schedule. We try to schedule guests throughout the calendar, and yeah. so we we have a our vacancies start in November, I think now. But uh, yeah, we'll definitely put you on the list. Great, thanks, guys. Cool. Sure. So, so right. what else have I done? Um, I've been preparing to go on holiday because I am taking three female children to France tomorrow. Very fancy. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, is uh, it as impressive was... in England when you say we're going to France as it is in America? Because when you say that in America, it's just like, whoa, you guys are going to Mars, basically. But for you, yeah, it's just yeah. a hop, skip, and a jump across the. It is. The lake, yeah, it's, it's, it? a, it's a drive nowadays. I mean, it is, with the it's, tunnel. Yeah. Yes, that's right. 35 minutes through the tunnel. 35 Come minutes away. through the tunnel. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Beautiful, though. Okay. Well, that's great. Um, mm. Larry, checking in with you. How you been? Oh, speaking oh, of which, fun. Yeah. one quick thing. In sign language, holiday, because Larry's wearing suspenders, uh, going on vacation is doing this. Oh, so for backpacking? Like, uh, it, or I, so like, I think the idea is if you're a farmer, you're on outside and you're just oh, like yeah. snapping your suspenders. I think that's yeah. the rule for it. I'm gonna have <laughs> well, to, how strange. The exactly. etymology behind it is weird. Let me, yeah, I'm going to have to look cool. up. Larry, how you been? <laughs> no, doing fine. Doing fine. Playing my computer games and working every day. I did take the bike out yesterday for the final ride of the year. Um, I say that because all summer long, I kept it parked outside with a cover over it. And, but during the winter, I put it in, in the garage and I put it in yesterday. So I don't uh, guess I'll okay. be getting it back out until next year. Okay. Not bad. All right. Looked it up real quick. It is this, but the problem is, is like you're snapping your suspenders as if you're a farmer taking a break. So you're not working. Oh. You're just like standing up, just like, you know, chilling. That's what the word vocation, vacation comes from. Yeah, that, By the way, it's a cool. different thing in uh, British Sign Language. So. It will yeah. be. I was going to say that yeah. is so American Sign Language. <laughs> and this this makes such good radio. <laughs> <laughs> very true. Very true. Very true. We, we're, anyway, not only, we're not only not a farming community, basically, but we also don't have what you call suspenders. We have braces and they're out of fashion. So. Oh, my bad. <laughs> So, yeah, you know, I've been looking for a good sign language podcast. Haven't found one yet. So, you know, there's a good one out there. Hopefully we'll we'll find it. But on radio, it's kind of rough. Guys, yes. I've been talking about um, scientism all week with uh, our friends over on Reddit uh, who have listened to last week's shows and led us some really great comments and thoughtful ideas about the idea of people worshiping science. Mm. And I thought, well, what do you even mean by that? And it turned out to be this whole, you know, uh, yeah. uh, mound can hill of, of yeah. yeah, can of hip, can of worms of pejorative terms that Christians use against people who who yeah. argue science yeah. or people who think that science is the absolute best way to understand the universe, exclusion to any other point of view. And I'm like, well, this is a lot to think about. I'd love to have you know, some of these ideas mold around by you guys. And I think we're a better place to start with than what are the different usages of scientism and how do you guys use those terms? Mm -hmm. uh, Larry, we'll throw it up to you first. What do you think of the word scientism? Don't you dare pull up Webster's Dictionary. Oh, no. Uh, right. Scientism. I, I think it, well, it's a prerogatory, a prerogatory word. It's a, it's a demeaning, demeaning word. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> In other words, they're trying to throw the onus on scientists and people who believe yes. that scientists reveal truth about the world. And, uh, you know, it's just trying, it's kind of a curse word that they use against us. And, uh, of course, there are, it's not in the dictionary and it's not um, a real word. It's just something they made up so that they could kind of put it, could put us down with it. Well, that's how it's come to mean, yes. Originally... <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm aware of the word in the dictionary, but not in the use that you are using it. Because I agree that scientism is in the dictionary. An insult. It scientism is. is a word in the dictionary. Yeah, yeah. but it's also okay. I stand corrected. It's also, it's also an insult that people throw out at each other, and I don't yeah. know if that usage mm -hmm. is in the dictionary. But mm -hmm. I am aware of that in pop culture, where people will be like, "Oh, well, you're you're claiming that I'm wrong because I believe in the Bible, but you just believe in whatever Einstein wrote in his book." Or what Darwin wrote in his book, you're just a scientistist, and we're both yeah. using faith. You don't you see we're both using mm -hmm. the same thing? What makes your system uh, better than mine? Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, John Richards, what do you think? Well, the trouble is here, people have taken a word which was uh, coined fairly innocently. Right. Just, just to mean, and I have got a dictionary definition in front of me here. Okay. The, 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 the opinion that science and the scientific method are the best or the only way to render truth about the world and reality. Now, I don't entirely agree with that, mm, but same. that is the gist of how the word came about. That's what people originally meant it to mean. Mm. But of course, what's happened since then is it's been bowderized, it's been manipulated by people with an agenda who mm. want to use it to propagandize yeah. their, mm -hmm. their mission. And, and uh, as as Larry said, it's become it's become to, to be used pejoratively. And so it, it's now taken the assumption is by these people who aim it target scientists scientists with this word they're, they're claiming that these scientists are claiming to know everything which no no real scientist would claim to know right i do they have a oh go ahead larry i was just going to say they wouldn't even claim to know anything outside of their speciality right mm. right you know um so i have an science yeah i have an issue i have an issue with both terms obviously we can go into the pejorative in more detail, but at least from the strict term of scientism is the belief in a general sense, going off the top of my head, that um, all things in the universe can be empirically tested and that through empirical testing, we can come up with the best way to derive actionable certainty. So like when it comes to determining what we're going to do next, the scientific method is the best way or empirical testing is the best way to do that test. What do you think, John Richards? Well, yeah, I've got a couple of things to respond to with that. First of all, currently, mm. not everything can be measured. Right. So, so a lot of things are outside the purview of science right now. Right. However, science continually extends its boundaries. As, yes. as new technologies are invented to investigate new phenomena, Right. Like, you know, when microscopes were invented up until then, we didn't know there was a microscopic world. Mm. But following <laughs> microscopes, we did. We found How out. How terrifying was that for the first guy to be like, ew, yes, they're everywhere. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yes, Germs are everywhere. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. Imagine yeah. that. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't drink that pond water. <laughs> so, so we've been doing that for hundreds of years. And of course, the most recent one was LIGO, the the a technology which enabled us to detect gravity waves for the first time, which was uh, it was successfully right. detected gravity waves. I think mm -hmm. it was in 2017. So we're we're continually pushing the boundaries of science outwards and being able to apply it to areas where it couldn't previously be applied. Mm -hmm. So, but at the moment, it would be a, a foolish thing to do to claim that we can use scientific method to apply to everything because, you know, somebody's going to come up and say, love, you can't apply it to love. Well, you know, you, we're, oh, we're working on it, you know. Well, hardly, if you can define the variable well enough, then yeah, I believe to an extent we can be measured. I also say this, science has this very useful thing. In fact, in my opinion, the most useful thing in science, and it's, you might've seen it in math, like UND or undefined, or mm -hmm. I don't know. Or, can't or just plain yet. X. <laughs> yes, or unknown variables. Science mm -hmm. has explicit unknown variables, which means mm -hmm. we can't come to determine yet, to determination yet, because we don't have the mechanics or the criteria mm -hmm. to properly figure yeah. out what this thing is. Science yeah. has room for that. There's room for I don't know in science. And I yes. find that to be the most useful impact yeah. in any sort of method, because you're not forcing yourself to a conclusion that could be wrong. You're admitting when you don't know something. And science yeah. has that. And so when I say there's room for application and science and everything, I mean, even in the areas where it's, I don't know, that is the scientific indication of pursuit because you're not making any claims of knowledge. You're, you're at least recognizing I have room to grow here and mm. science does grow. And I find like, that's such a great intellectually honest way of going about trying to figure out how everything in the universe operates. Mm. Mm. Not only that, but even the measurements that we can make, they have probability bars don't they where you yeah can, they do they get that little plus in this range thing. somewhere yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah so when i say at least when i say i feel like science could be used for anything in the universe 
obviously things that aren't things wouldn't be applicable in that statement. So like gods, ghosts, souls, we can't apply science to that, but it'd still be one big, I don't know, but also with the caveat of being, please at least determine that this is a thing that's worth investigating first before we actually spend any time doing it. Cause right now there's no evidence for it. Just like unicorns or pixie dust and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, exactly. So, I'll throw this so oh, go ahead, John. Good scientists wouldn't claim to know everything or right. even to know to know anything with absolute accuracy. Correct. Uh, Correct. However, uh, what people who accuse us of scientism want us to do mm. is to do that, is to claim that you know we can solve everything. But the thing is. What alternative method do they have? There, you know? There's the crux that I have a problem mm -hmm. with. That's the crux. That's the crux. Because it's a, yes, it's yeah. a, it is an argument that sounds very tantalizing to me. But it's also, so like the idea is you have to exclude all other points of view except for science because there's no other method that has been equally as good as science, right? right. And, and if there is something better out there, please present it yeah. to me because I don't see it. Yeah. But yes. isn't that bordering along the lines of a black swan fallacy where it's like, right. I've never seen a black swan. I'm only seeing white swans. If you're saying there's a black one, present it to me. Otherwise, there's only white swans. It's like, just because we can't demonstrate to you in this moment the better method doesn't mean that there couldn't necessarily be one out there. No, what I like about that. science is that it is willing to adapt to the best method. Science isn't necessarily its own codified thing. It's just the best method and process that we can use to understand the universe. Yeah, yeah. If a better method is presented to us, that becomes our new science. That's yeah, that's the exactly. way how I see it in my head. Yeah. Uh, Larry, what do you think? Yeah, it's like those people who say you can't trust your senses. You know, they're, they're trying to make a point or something. But yeah, but I saw them. Well, you can't trust your senses. Uh, what else are we supposed to use? <laughs> uh, that's, that's it. Right. You know, right. We have uh, a we have a hard limitation on like uh -huh. our five sentences, our five senses and how, we, or our many senses, senses mm -hmm. and how senses. we interpret the universe mm -hmm. with our own cognitive biases and all that other stuff. But if we can find a way to subvert that maybe, and like a robot showed us like, hey, this is how we can do it without limitations of smell, sight, understanding, childhood trauma, all this stuff. Just, this computer is the best way of doing it. Or like these aliens who have like this better technology who came down and showed us what's up, that will become our new science. So yes. we'd still be using science, but our science would evolve. But it's not necessarily the idea that the science that we have now is the end all be all best method possible. It's just this evolutionary process. Larry, what do you think? Well, we do have science that, that will develop uh, technology to extend our senses. I mean, we can now mm. see things in infrared. Uh, we can hear Correct. things in ultrasound, you know, all of that stuff. But it still comes down to our senses reading the readout of those right. instruments. Right. I mean, we still have to depend on those senses. Mm. Right. Uh, like, for example, we have this device in our lab called a scanning electron microscope. It mm -hmm. sees things that are too small for you to see with light because light doesn't travel in a straight line. Light travels in waves. And those waves are so big that things that are smaller right. than the wavelength of light can't yeah. really be seen very well. Yeah. So we have to use electricity to, to zap it because electricity moves through space more or less in a straight line. And it hits our sample. And what the SCM does is convert an electrical signal into a visual signal that we can, that we can appreciate. All the SCM is, the microscope that we have, is a electricity to light translator, just so that we can appreciate what we're looking at. But yeah. at the end of the day, it's still our eyes looking at it. And who knows right. what, what small you know, defects come about from that translation process. But it is a way for us to see things that we can't necessarily see with our eyes. We are extending our capability of seeing things through technology. And, you know, I can't imagine that what we have right now is going to be the best method a thousand years from now. Like a thousand years right. from now, we're going to have something mm -hmm. substantially better. That's still going to be our science, mm -hmm. thankfully. That's still yeah. science. That's still that's just the progression of what we've developed. Yes. And I want us just to recognize that, yeah, we may not be able to find a better version of science right now but we're making a better version every day and yes. so if you gave us tomorrow or next week we're gonna have something better than when we had last week ago oh. so if you when we say hey show me a better method than science it's like science isn't a thing that's stationary yeah. it's not a snapshot well, it's yeah. a process right yeah. you got to remember that constantly moving constantly improving which yes. makes it better As than well. dogma because it's right. always willing to change and recognize when it doesn't know something that's what i value so much about it john yeah. do you have any points yeah, well, uh, something that's moving but never gets anywhere is my, um, my boat here, <laughs> my, my background. 
But I wanted to say that the important thing to get here is that it's it's not about knowing everything. It's right. about discovering. It's the best Ooh. method for investigating that yes. we have at the moment. Yeah. And as you say, tomorrow we'll have a better method. Like the up until 2017, we didn't have the, the LIGO interferometers, so we couldn't Correct. detect gravity waves, but now we can. Correct. Yes. So now let's get into the more, I think, hot topic, which is we've discussed scientism in the, the empirical sense. We understand what science is. What do Christians mean when they call us scientists or scientism, scientism? And uh, we can't speak for Christians, but we at least have, you know, comments from Christianity blog posts where they equate their religious points of views with how atheism's uh, appeals to experts in science. And they say, oh. you know, this guy isn't a biologist, yet he'll believe what a, a, a supposed authority in biology claims what happened to human beings, you know, what they claim billions and billions of years ago. And in my head, I get little red flags where it's like, you know, it's not so much that we're believing it just based on because someone said it. It's that there's a substantial degree of evidence to support it to the point where every step of the way of that evidence is a fairly mundane claim to where it's a much less extraordinary claim to, to interpret all of this than a God did it, which is still a substantiated and a very extraordinary claim that needs more than a book for me to, to believe that it's true. My problem generally with the, the pejorative sense of scientism is that it tries to equate baseless faith with um, evidential pursuits of research. And I find that to be a very dangerous equivocation. Yeah. John, do you well, have an opinion? Go for yeah, it. what you're talking about there is the appeal to authority fallacy, mm. which which Christians and other theists are very prone to do. They, they love a, a big, powerful know-all. In, and they have subsidiary know-alls in their hierarchy who represent are you saying god's just a big know-it-all like <laughs> <laughs> yes i am according oh, wow. to them okay but 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 what we have what we if you look at a science book mm. is written very differently mm. from the way a bible or other scripture is written they're all about stories right there's no story mm. in a science book it's boring stuff it's about this these were the ingredients that we used in the proper the you know the what we started out with this is the method that we applied right and this right. is what we observed and it's it's very dry reading it's not a page mm. turner no so and, and the point about that is anybody it's like following a recipe to cook a pie you know anybody with access to the correct equipment could repeat that claim right. and get the answer for them selves right it's not about appealing to an authority it's about the potential ability to repeat it yourself it's also falsifiable in the sense that if i don't get the same result you do i can contact yeah, yeah. the author and be like yeah. this doesn't yeah. work you need to yes. revise something because i did everything exactly as you said and yes, if enough yes. people say that then the has yes. to, something needs to change you can't exactly. do that with the bible every single time i don't get a prayer answered i can't be well, like, you're not allowed oh, you're not allowed to <laughs> you're not allowed to criticize or or complain about the bible's claims but the thing about science is we love to be criticized and to find mm. fallacies in our thinking because that's how we progress right larry yeah um no even today if you if you talk to a believer uh you it won't be very long before they bring up an anecdote about somebody in the church or the next church over or in the next state who had a miracle performed on them in Ooh. church and everybody saw it. It's an anecdote. And yeah. they rely so much on these anecdotes that just go around be between the, the parishioners. It, it's, it's obvious to anybody outside, but not inside, because basically the Bible is a book of anecdotes yes. that you're supposed to take on base value. Yes. So here's the scary thing is for some of the people, uh, a, a significant in my head, a significant percentage, it is just as obvious to them that it's just a book of claims. But in order for them to rationalize the time that they're spending staying in the church and avoiding all the backlash that will come from them leaving their faith, they have to say, well, I guess this is OK to, to come to the conclusion that a God exists. And I guess this is a good method for figuring out that things are true. A book where people just say that it happened. And when I look mm -hmm. outside at science, 
I see them looking at books where they there are people who are claiming things happen. So that just must be the way that, you know, that's a, a good way to determine things are true. And the problem is, is that's a very dangerous mindset because then they read the news and they're like, a billion people said that this country should be bombed. They're like, well, I guess that's true because, you know, that's what my news is saying. That's what my president's saying. That's what my local friend group is saying. I'm just going to go going with the flow. What do you think, Larry? Yeah, but they don't take it one step further that every religion has their own holy book right. you know and they contradict each other they can't all be right mm. yeah. yeah and not only that but they'll vote on stuff like that too that's why this is yeah. a problem because you know we're in midterm elections right now stuff like your beliefs matter because they inform your actions and so mm -hmm. when it comes to like actionable certainty i prefer empiricism rather than spiritual claims and when people want to call me a scientism scientist or say i'm using scientism for that let them because i also think gravity is a thing does that make me a gravitism as well you know like we have to be able to draw the line somewhere and i find like what we understand science to be it's a very useful method for determining true things from false things larry we're near the end of the bottom of the half you want we to are. listen to comments after the break well sure be sure to stay tuned for the second half of the digital free thought radio hour here on wozo radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. I'm Daughter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk for just a moment about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002, and we're in our 20th year. We have over a thousand members now, creeping up on 1,100. We have weekly in-person meetings every Tuesday evening at Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria, which starts around 5:30. Look for us inside at the high top tables, or if it's pretty weather outside on the deck. Also, we have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings on Ask. If you'd like to join us, email us for details at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us online on Facebook, meetup.com, or at our website, knoxvilleatheist.org, or you can just Google Knoxville Atheist if it's easier to remember. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you should still go to meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Start, Start one. one. That's right. Oh, no. Oh, well, bet, where do you oh, want to pick no. Up? I looked uh, up how to say holiday in British sign language. And it is the most offensive thing I've ever seen. Oh no. I can do this because it's radio and I'm not making this up, but the sign for holiday or they don't say vacation in British sign language. It's called exclusively holiday. It's this. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, no. I know. I saw and that. We can't like, repeat that on, can we, we talk can't about repeat it that on radio, 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 but that's exactly <laughs> what that is. How bizarre. Is, wow. What a, what a yes. beautiful language. The what double finger. The, the double, double finger. finger. Great. Yeah. Anyway, guys, we are talking about scientism today, and we're going over some listener comments. Feel free to leave more in the YouTube channel um, or post when we open up the chat room in, on Reddit. We'll be happy to take them. We're going to go through some comments that we've selected before the show. First, we'll just do a recap of the first half uh, because SpaghettiO asked, what is scientism? And John Richards, would you mind giving us a quick a uh, recap on what scientism is? Well, sure. The, the first original meaning is that it's the, the pro proposition, the concept that scientific method is the best or only way to discover the truth about the world and reality. And I, I subscribe to that, but I, that doesn't mean that I could claim that it does, that it's finished, you know, that it has already discovered everything. But when theists use it pejoratively, what they are claiming is that scientists and people who believe that science is that best investigative tool are claiming that they've solved all the mysteries. Mm -hmm. And that isn't the case. No. Right. Larry, anything to add? No, there's still be mysteries no matter what. Uh, you were saying a little earlier that we can't investigate uh, things like souls and we could if we had an example mm -hmm. but in 2000 3000 years nobody has ever supplied us with an example to examine 
not yeah. even the ghost hunters <laughs> and <laughs> they're, they're in professionals their <laughs> they're in their 20s that's season. right <laughs> so, so the whole give, thing it, is... give us a sample and science will take off right if it's, the, not, I... if it's not ghost hunters who are you gonna call that's right, right. <laughs> my whole thing is when you can demonstrate that it's worth pursuit then we will begin the pursuit but until then we live in a world where we have a limited amount of time right and pixie dust unicorns souls oh. ghosts the kraken all these things need to be demonstrated that there's an option for them to exist yeah. first before we even begin yeah. to an analyze it. Because when I do research, it's not from uh, the idea of like, well, I'll just Google it and, and determine if it's right or wrong there. No, it's like, we're going to actually spend money on this. Like, we're going to actually yeah. try to figure this out. We're going to take man hours. We're going to investigate it. Let's make sure it's worth our time. And yeah. until you can demonstrate that it is, you know, at least potentially worth our time, don't waste yeah. our time, basically. Yeah. John Richards, what do you think? Well, if, if we look at the alternatives to scientific method that we've experienced in the past, they include a crystal ball, you know, palmistry, uh, reading the tea leaves. Horoscopes. <laughs> yes, they're just Astrology. laughable. So at the moment, science is the winner. And, and willing to adapt and change as needed. That's the most yes. powerful tool behind it. It absorbs good ideas and gets rid of bad ones. That's why science mm -hmm. is so great. Uh, uh, Larry, I'm going to throw this one out at you. This is a comment from formerly committed scientism, evolutionist, Darwinist. You know, it's all noise used to generate or used to try to bastardize people from the rest of society to make it easier to attack them. Should people who believe in gravity be called gravitists or Newtonists? What do you think? Yes. Or electricianists. Yeah. Electricianists. You know, right. It's all a way of demonizing the other. Uh, as religion is so famous that for doing, uh, they've mm. separated people into individual groups for centuries, millennia, uh, yeah. saying, we've got the truth, you don't. And right. therefore, you know, we, shouldn't we don't accept. have to pay attention to what you're saying or to what you right. do. Yeah. We shouldn't well, accept hateful labels, should we? We it, shouldn't accept no, no, hateful labels. Certainly not we are so good at them. making them, you know? Yeah. As if, if anybody's, if anybody's going to label me, I want it to be me. Okay. I actually know a guy named me at our lab and it's very, it's great. <laughs> I, know, I know a guy named you. I know a guy named me and I know a guy named her, but so it's just a very, very, well, it's a very, very uh, interesting lab space that we're in. Uh, let's see. Schizmo also concurs. He says, just another label. We don't need scientism. Thank you, but no thanks. Uh, Larry, I'm going to throw this one out at you. Oh, wait, actually, John Richards, this is for you. This is on evolutionary creationism. So, and this is by Text Bliss. She writes, mm -hmm. so how mm -hmm. could one affirm evolutionary creation while at the same time try to claim or embrace the historical Christian faith? It's like understanding that all the toys under the tree are at Christmas are from your parents. Reindeers can't fly and elves don't work at all in the North Pole, but still believing that Santa is real. What's that yeah. cognitive dissonance all about? Yes, well, it, it's a desperate attempt to justify belief in creation, isn't it? Because what they're saying is that evolution is true, but it was actually kickstarted by our God. And there's no evidence for that. That's just, we call that wishful thinkianity. Whoa, say that one more time. Wishful thinkianity. I love it. Wishful thinkianity. Okay, cool. I'm going to keep that in mind. Go on, Ed Larry. You're muted. Oh, I thought my audio went out. I was scared for a second. Oh, uh, and it's also a way of putting God in the gaps. You know, we don't have a particular explanation for a phenomenon, you know, so we'll shoehorn God in there. Yes. Uh, and <clears throat> uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson says, if that's your philosophy, then your your God is an ever receding gap in human knowledge. Mm. You know, so have fun. Yeah. As we discover stuff, so he retreats. Uh -huh. Right. I couldn't Ooh. think of a more pointed, you know, indictment against a being than the more you understand the world, the smaller they become, you know, right. like, well. what does that say about the religion in the whole? Uh -huh. All right. So I have a heavy topic right here. Uh, this is from a commentator from last week. And she mentioned uh, that she wanted to stay anonymous this week. And she says, thanks for taking this topic from last week's discussion. I'll add a disclaimer that I am an atheist, happily so, and a researcher. 
Science, scientism to me is real and defined as people taking scientific claims as fact or faith without applying the same degree of skepticism that generated the claim in the first place. Quality research produces reports that are accessible to anyone, including folks who just sit and skim information online from their armchairs. However, armchair research isn't the same as the process that generated the data in the first place. Yet people can just as easily identify and fight on reports as if they internalize them despite lacking credentials, practice, experience, or authority on the subject. Just like dogmatic people can read a verse from their holy book and assume that they're experts on morality and wisdom. I understand that this reckoning will be difficult to swallow and may even hurt a lot of people's feelings, but honestly, there's a reason scientists are hired from academia and not Craigslist. It's annoying to see niche areas of science get popularized by people who don't understand it because then it just mystifies what science is. To avoid a longer rant, Religion isn't annoying because it's religion. It's annoying because it causes people to turn off their skeptical mindset. When yes. science is used in the same way, it can be just as annoying and dangerous. Even the most scientific claim from the most confident person is not an excuse to stop being skeptical. Absolutely. Right. I Question agree everything. So right. Yeah. Wow. I'm glad that that was accepted well. I'm, I, I, I generally believe like everything that was said, and I think there was a longer discussion in the chat thread on the idea of, well, is well, that... Thing actually scientism or not and it's like in a, nu whether it is in or a not, nutshell in a, in a nutshell what that person was saying and thank you for phoning it in the was that dogmatism is universally bad you know we should right. nobody scientist mm -hmm. theist atheist whatever nobody should be dogmatic we should mm -hmm. all, if you if you watch scientists being interviewed they're always very careful about their expression they don't claim that anything is perfectly correct. They say the evidence indicates. Correct. And that's why I don't have a really much of a problem with deism. Uh, they don't have any dogma. You yeah. know, they say God created the universe, but it's not a God we ever heard of. We don't have any idea what's in his mind or her mind or its mind. Uh, we can't tell you what he, it or she wants you to do. There's no book. You know, yeah. deism yeah. to me is harmless. But, uh, yeah. you know, there are atheists that don't want to stop there, don't want to yeah. allow that to, to happen and yeah. continue berating a person who believes in deism. And I, I don't know. I don't I don't go along with that. If every religious person was a deist, yeah, a lot of things would be I wouldn't have, dramatically I wouldn't, better. We wouldn't, wouldn't have be a on problem. radio. Yeah. You know. <laughs> to <laughs> me. It'd be like, my job is done and he'd fly into the That's sunset. right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> To, to me, deism is mother nature, and I can accept that. Mm. Right. Except, uh, again, deism seemed to, like any god, would think that it has a purpose or um, um, what? A mind, uh, right. a, a will, per mm. se. And I don't think nature does. No. So, no. I've had an analogy brought to me before that I always like going back to, but it's sort of like if you're on an island that has worms underneath a banana tree and you only eat the worms under the banana tree because you don't want to climb up to get to the bananas because that takes effort. And so you're just spending your day just eating worms, gross worms from the dirt. When there are bananas right above you, if you just were willing to climb up high enough to get them, um, that's how I kind of see deism. It's sort of like you're right there. You, you don't have any of the baggage of dogma, but you're still using this weird methodology to believe in a supernatural being. Even if it is dead and it's not affecting your life, you still have this hang up. If you just took one extra step, you'd be able to at least be in a position where you don't have, where you have a better methodology of appreciating true things and false things. Because if you're still convinced that a God is that was, was real, but is just dead, that that's still bad because you don't have any evidence to support that or any rational right. rational <clears throat> basis to to. Yeah, be convinced that that's true. Speaking of evidence, it really gets me when uh, you know believers question the evidence that science has presumed. I mean, presented like mm -hmm. um, carbon dating, things like that. Uh, you have all this mountains of evidence, and they say, "Well, it's not real. It's not true because blah blah blah." And it's almost like if you had good evidence, they would accept it, but they don't. And they don't demand any evidence from their own beliefs, their own religious teachings. You, you just have to take that on faith. Yeah, slight so, bias there. A little bit. I got a comment from YouTube that I think would be useful. Please, guys, be nice to this person. All right. So this one is, oh, Ty, remember that story where you talk about the guy drowning 
and what God answered him according to your version, well, you are wrong about that. You see, the afterlife is the goal. It doesn't matter how one dies and gets to the live in eternity. Thus, God can not like or dislike any type of death because all ways of dying should satisfy the goal, which is getting to the afterlife. So if you guys don't understand the context behind this, I told a story where a guy was drowning and he asked for God to help him, but he ended up drowning anyway. And he goes to the pearly gates and he asks God, why God, didn't you help me? And oh. God's like, I like drowning people. <laughs> but you read my book. I do it a lot. I love it. I love it. And so like, it's a twist on the idea of like the boat coming and then like a lifeguard coming and then a helicopter coming and the guy still drowns. And it's like, God's like, I give you the helicopter, the lifeguard and all this other stuff. But the idea is, is this commenter saying that any way you die is okay, because that gets you to the afterlife. And that's the goal. What do you think? Yeah, about yeah. That? So, so, so <clears throat> if the goal, if the goal is the afterlife, mm. what is stopping our correspondent from suicide now? I said, be nice. I said, be nice. Didn't I prefer, didn't I start that? Anyway, uh, <laughs> Larry, what do you think? I don't know how to respond to that. Well, he's glorifying death in one vein and minimizing the harm of it or the badness of death in the other. Uh, <clears throat> remember for, uh, for the religious death is just a change of address. And, you know, it's, <clears throat> you know, it's almost like, why should we avoid it? And type ah. of thing, type of mentality. Also, <clears throat> excuse me, what is, if they say the purpose of life is death, what is the purpose of life after death? Because once you're there, you've received your goal and you've mm. got a, the eternity mm. to sit there with no purpose. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so Dada's Trading Room has responded, and I'd love to get your feedback on this, on why people just don't suicide. He says, mm. If that would be the truth passed on to people, most people would likely choose to die instead of suffering on life on earth. After all, the quicker ones get their internal paradise faster, and that's better, right? So some justification for staying alive, even if in misery, had to be invented. One such justification is sin and the threat of internal torture in hell. And so yeah. that's the if reason If you kill why yourself, it's sin. Mm -hmm. Yes, suicide so is sin. So is he in favor of assisted dying for the terminally ill then? You know, I remember that argument being brought up for assisted suicide, people being like, you're condemning these souls to die. And people who are literally in pain for the rest of their short lifespans were like, please don't let this story, you know, completely delete my quality of life for my last, you know, couple of months. I like, I want to go as soon as I possibly can, please. Wow. It's, it's. It's depressing how this actually does affect people's lives. Yeah. We can have this like cordial conversation here, but there are people actually suffering as a result of the dogma that yes. people believe. Yes, it's we've true. gone to a dark place. Mm. All right, let's go into the next comment. Thank you, Dada's Trading Room, always for the comments. Next one, I'm going to throw out to Larry. Larry, full disclosure. Uh, oh, here's, here's three rules. Number one rule, and this is given to us by Grumpy Kong. Doing science is awesome. Number two rule, worshiping science is not. And number three, the tendency is not limited to the scientifically illiterate. It does nothing to forward the cause of scientific excellence to worship science. At best, it encourages fanboy behavior. At worst, it justifies charlatans. Sometimes those charlatans cost people their lives. Larry, what do you think? Well, he's just made a series of claims. I'm, <clears throat> I'm not sure there's a question in there to answer. Uh, I, I want your feedback. It doesn't have to be an answer. It's just doing science is awesome. Worshiping science is not. And the tendency is not limited by the scientific illiterate. So well, I, you know, I agree with him on the worship. I, I don't think we yeah. should worship anything. Worshiping is, yeah. is counterproductive. It, it, it sets your mind to not asking questions, not holding anything to accountability. Um, we shouldn't worship anything, not even science. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> who's uh, who's the, advocating worship? Not me. Not me. Yeah. And we're all saying we shouldn't uh, worship science, right? Yeah. No, uh, we just, we are convinced that it's the best approach to take to find out, find answers from nature. Right. All right. So I got another <laughs> one for you, John Richards. This is a comment that I'd like to get your feedback on. Um, it's written by, uh-oh, Ibear. And Ibear says, scientism is essentially just another word for empiricism. It's just the belief that the scientific method is the correct way to understand the universe. That's the definition that you guys were talking about originally. That's what scientism actually is. 
But most of the time when you hear scientism, you're hearing a believer accusing a non-believer of worshiping science. Right. It's an attempt to pretend <clears throat> the, that the like non-believer's that. position is equivalent to the believer's in foundation and support. And that's a lie. Yeah. Um, that's not that's scientism, good. not by the official definition or the more common pejorative meaning. You are talking about something else if you say otherwise, something that is not scientism. You need to understand that. What do you think? It's, it's, it's distorting definitions as a weapon to try and get your message across. Right. I agree. Uh, Gullibility <clears throat> is not the same thing as scientism. Uh, what do you think, Larry? Well, <clears throat> one of the things you said earlier was uh, intriguing. I thought I'd address it. Uh, it says, uh, why do people just believe uh, science? They can't. Uh, the, we're talking about people who don't do the science. We just uh, listen to what the scientists say and believe them. And uh, generally, uh, that's the that's the concern of believers when they see us um, quote worshiping science, as it were. You know, you don't do the science, but you know, you you claim to know that evolution is true because of right. the science. Right. Well, you know, it says there's a meme here that I'm looking at. I can't give the credit to whoever wrote it because I don't know who it is. It says creation, evolution. Nobody really knows for sure how that stuff began, but I'd rather trust the dudes in the lamp coats who aren't demanding that I get up every early every Sunday and overdress and apologize for being human. <laughs> I mean, that there's a lot to that in that uh, religion makes an awful lot of demands on people. Mm. Um, yes, tith true. Tithing, uh, you know, going to yeah. church several times a week, you yeah. know, et cetera, they et cetera. Do. And they do want worshiping right yes. and they threaten you science doesn't threaten you with eternal life you know eternal right. pain uh it's you know they they present the results their peers evaluate the results and when they agree they publish the papers and we have new science mm. something we need to respect and recognize is that religion is marketing in its peak form right you have uh -huh. a product that no one can see, taste, smell, hear, but yet everyone has a personal experience with it. And you produce it by constantly making iconography that people have to, you know, put on their bodies, tattoo on their arms, chest, whatever. Your their kids are sent to schools that have the same marketing appeal. Uh, people are shunned if they don't have the same idea or the brand loyalty that you profess to have the, yourself. This whole strategy is just very targeted propaganda towards a particular product or a brand. And um, alternatively, science has a very good brand as well. Its brand association would be tied to credibility, smart people, authorities and fields that like seem to be technologically very useful and everyone loves technology and having new cool things. So what religion is trying to do oftentimes is pull the useful aspects of the science brand and, and accommodate it in its brand of dogma. And I find that to be you know, a scary thing because who can champion against that other than adherence for critical thinking and who's listening to us compared to like who's listening to religious people. But also it should be indicative, it should be indicative that science is doing a good thing on its own. It's not asking you for your tithing. It's not asking for your soul. It's not asking for your worship. Yet the people who are, are trying to borrow as much as they can from it to get the credibility from it. That should be telling because science isn't doing the other way around. Science is like, yeah. you guys, I have nothing to want. I have nothing for your gods. I don't even want them. I'm just going to keep doing our own laboratory thing. And people are yeah. going to keep trying to pull credibility from us because we are, in my opinion, the most credible way to try to figure out true things from false things. Yeah, That's why you have religions called Scientology or why people try to lambast scientism because they're trying to denigrate science down a little bit and propose oh. their religion up just a little bit, or at least put them on yeah. equal footing. Yeah. Oh. And I think we should hit back at that. And the coin a word, religiology. Ooh. <laughs> a religionist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because is that your well, religiology is telling you that? Is well, your scientism telling you that? <laughs> <laughs> what, what they're trying to do is make claims that they can't justify, mm. but they want us to adopt. Right. Well, that's definitely like scientism with mm. you know, the ism a bit on the end, uh, an ideology of sorts. But it's without the foundation that science actually has. Right. I got a closing comment before we end up the show. Um, there is a very, very, speaking of cool technology, there is a website called Writer, R-Y-T-R. And it's an AI writer. And all you have to do is give it a prompt. And you say, 
make an article about why the uh, the why France's economy is two percent higher today than it was yesterday. You just put that as a sentence, and it will generate like a a one page report, three page report, whatever you want. That sounds like if it was written by a human being. Sounds like there's all the same tones in that because it's just using hmm. algorithms to pull together AI, a very detailed artificial article. intelligence yes. writing it. And it is terrifying because now I realize that a lot of the articles I'm reading are basically pulled by the same algorithm as well. Yeah. yeah so yeah. two things I'm learning. Uh, One, even for things that I, I respect the sources, I should be willing to be skeptical about them because yeah. I don't know what was produced or what was used to make the articles that I read, right? Yeah. Or what the agenda was behind them. So even scientific articles I need to be you know, uh, skeptical against. But also, if you prompt this AI robot to write an argument for the existence of God, it just flat out says, I don't have a belief in God. I'm sorry you have that problem. <laughs> so so what's, what's uh -huh. the name? What's the name of this AI? R Y T R writer, writer, writer. It's no, 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 no. It's it's Deepak Chopra. Oh. Okay. 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 I just I hope just, high school students don't get a hold of it. No, I they'll just never love how they'll never like turn in a um, I, a paper again that's their own i love ais that don't do our dirty work for us they're like nah that's not worth my time i'm not going to do that anyway we're near the end of the show john rich is anything that you like to plug before we head out yeah well um i've i've done a a a, a uk atheism uk podcast this morning that was um mm. very good i had esther our guest and we talked about um not my religion because there's a lot of people who begin to perceive that there's something wrong with their religion, but they don't want to give up the entire thing. So they put it on the pick and mix counter and mm. select the bits they like and say that these are in my religion and these aren't. So they're, they're sorting it out, sort of watering it down, and they won't go to that last step. Pick and mix. I've never heard that before. That's great. <laughs> That's like cherry picking what we say. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll say I'll leave with this. Thank you guys so much for your comments. Feel free to leave more and we'll get to them in next week's show. Thank you, everybody. And Larry, I still don't know what religion is all about or atheism. You got to figure out a way. To you know, people it. write books on that. Oh, man. <laughs> you should write I a happen book. To, I happen to have done that. Uh, you can go to uh, Amazon and find my book, Atheism, What's It All About? Um, and actually, you can go to my website, digitalfreethought.com, click on the blog button, and read many of the articles that are in that book. Uh, also, we have a radio show archive there, Atheist Songs, and many articles on the subject of atheism. That's digitalfreethought.com. If you have any questions for the show, you can send them to askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org, or let's chat se at gmail.com, and we'll answer them on future shows. Remember, you can find the Atheist Society of Knoxville at knoxvilleatheist.org or just Google, Google Knoxville Atheists. And if you're having trouble re, re, leaving religious beliefs behind, you can get help at Recovering From Religion. Their website is, uh, rationally enough, recoveringfromreligion.org. Uh, you can find this show and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. I don't believe they are. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life. And we'll see you next Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Say bye, everybody. Have a nice day. Bye. Hour, bye. <laughs> and good. Thank you very much. Great yeah. show.